Kill or Be Killed is an American comic book series that ran from August 2016 to June 2018 that culminates a 20 issue story that details the life of a suicidal college student who was mysteriously saved by a demon who offers him a deadly ultimatum. If you want to continue to live, if you want your life to feel fulfilled, you must sacrifice one person per month for me which sends our main protagonist Dylan spiraling between the duality of what is truly good and evil as he becomes New York's vigilante who kills once per month every month to satiate the demon that is tormenting him while trying to evade the police. This is the American version of Death Note, Kill or Be Killed, written by Ed Brubaker and brought to life by British illustrator Sean Phillips. While Death Note is an anime and manga exploring the moral quandary of what is good and what is evil and its existential ambience to certain fundamental principles of right and wrong, pushing the ideological principle of utilitarianism, Kill or Be Killed takes a more deteriological stand on the subject, with the main character proclaiming that everyone knows the difference between what's right and what's wrong, because every kid's book and every fairy tale we've grown up with and ever heard is full of good guys and heroes and bad guys who are wicked witches, greedy tricksters, and monsters. It's that people completely understand what's right and what's wrong. However, some Somewhere down the line, humanity decided that the real world isn't like a storybook and began using justifications and rationalizations to explain away every immoral choice someone has ever chosen, and choosing to fortify all of their broken places and ideas with more broken ideologies, which is also prompted up by a broken justice system. However, where Light from Death Note is an evil asshole with a guide complex doing something for a greater good but committing evil to achieve his goal, Dylan is a character that's more sympathetic because he's doing the right thing solely because it's right and won't put up with the broken justice system any longer and makes it his mission to kill people he deems are evil, to sacrifice to the demon because if he doesn't, he will grow ill and die from a mysterious illness. For example, the first person he kills is the older brother of his childhood friend who sexually molested his little brother. This leads to the dismantling of a nationwide pedophile ring accumulating in hundreds of arrests across the nation. And from here, the story goes downhill for Dylan who develops a cynical worldview and criticizes the world and its people for its materialistic needs, while in actuality he wishes he could connect better with the people in the world he hates so much. But to continue the main narrative, while searching for his next monthly target, Dylan settles on a brothel run by the Russian mob, murdering one of its men, but in a shocking twist, he is violently beaten by one of the sex workers before he escapes, because his main objective was to free the sex workers, which draws the attention of a detective Lily Sharp as she begins to connect the dots between Dylan's murders across New York and the Russian mob bringing utter calamity to New York City as the story continues on, and this culminates and will continue throughout the end of the story where it will conclude. But ultimately, Kill or Be Killed explores the philosophical idea of, hang on a second, Arthur Schopenhauer, and his philosophical idea of, quote, the will to live, end quote. At its most basic principle, it basically claims that the most fundamental aspects of life is found in every living human being on the planet, while the ideological idea explored by Nietzsche, an author describes the endowment of power one finds in pleasure utilizing one's own power, i.e. live a materialistic or hedonistic life, or i.e. use your power and justify that justification of that power for your reason to live, essentially to fall in love with that very idea of using that power to dominate others even by ways of cruelty. Using an analogy to basically describe this is basically saying that the ends justify the means, while the means themselves self-justify. In Death Note, Light Yagami's Death Note allows him to justify everything he does, as it is his power, because the Death Note allows him to do what he always wanted to do, which is to save the world from criminals and those that are inadequate to society, destroying them. And as time goes on, we see how the power of the Death Note swallows his rationality and humanity, and what starts as a once-in-a-lifetime chance to save the world becomes a path built on the pleasure of his own domination and rise to power. While he self-masturbates his ego, narcissism, and his god complex as the ruler of the new world, eradicating all those that stand in his way, finding pleasure in his cruelty. While in Kill or Be Killed, the demon in Dylan's small arsenal of weapons bring forth his will to live and manifest from the concept that he'll die if he doesn't successfully kill someone by the end of the month. Taking pleasure in cruelty, he unleashes on the criminal element
planets within New York. And the difference between Light Yagami and Dylan Cross is while Light is corrupted by his own power, Dylan becomes more morally stronger by his having a very black and white view on what's good and what's evil and only using his ability to kill people or his privilege to kill people which is within everyone to do the right thing for the right reason solely because it's right. Therefore, and in conclusion, where the more Light Yagami kills, the more he lusts for powers to set the course for his ultimate goal of becoming the ultimate god of judgment, whereas the more Dylan kills, the more he feels attached to the people in his life and the world that he hates so much, making a difference to the world he loathes. The divide is where Light Yagami's own desire for control and supremacy leads him to kill many innocent people and eventually has no problems or qualms eliminating family members or his friends for his own insane and psychotic ideological beliefs. Dylan isn't willing to cross that line to dish out his own brand of justice as he sees fits as he only views the world as in black and white colors. Having a hard stance on his rock hard right is right and wrong is wrong ideological belief. But the question you must be wondering is, should you read Kill or Be Killed? Yes, absolutely, simply because it's a book that makes you ask questions such as, when is it right or wrong to kill someone? Is this how a serial killer starts to justify his or hers actions? What is it like to completely lose your mind and have a mental breakdown and questions such as those? But the biggest appeal of the story is how real it feels and how it integrates its dark themes into the story, pushing the boundaries on conventional storytelling, and that, that's what makes the story come to life. <laughs>